Please welcome Labor Secretary Marty Walsh. Secretary Walsh, welcome back to The Daily Show. It's great to be here. A lot's happened in five years. It, it really has. I mean, the last time you were here, you were the mayor of Boston, and now you have come back and you are the labor of secretary, which means that you do what exactly? I run all the jobs in America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it seems like America's doing a good job right now with the jobs, you know? Obviously, COVID was one of the worst periods that the yeah. world has seen. Yeah. You know, uh, millions of people lost their jobs. The economy was in tatters. Now things are coming up. But it's an interesting time. The administration wants to get people working, and more importantly, the administration wants to get people working in jobs that actually allow them to earn a living, yeah. which is key. Because I think many people have jobs, not everybody can earn a living from the jobs that they have. That's a true statement. You know, and so, at the same time, you have the Fed who is trying to shrink how much money people can earn. It's a really good time to be in the job market right now because you can earn a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it seems like in trying to control interest rates, there are conflicting interests. How do you, how do you deal but, with this? Yeah, well, the Fed, the Fed has their own plan and they're working to bring down inflationary pressures that everyone in this audience and around the country are feeling. And, and President Biden rolled out a plan as well to, to, to deal with inflation. One is gas, and we've seen for nine straight weeks in a row, gas prices come down. Uh, I'm, I'm of the camp that, you know, a good paying job is, is important for America, it's good for people. Uh, and, and I know that there's some, the Fed has said at some point, you know, having a little bit of unemployment might be good. I actually want to do everything I can to get more people working. We've had two amazing months in a row of job gain in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to continue to see that trend. I want people to move from, from jobs that are paying mediocre into better paying jobs. I want to see people to use their power with their companies to earn better wages. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's about keeping people working and, mm -hmm. and that, that moves our economy more money into the economy and I think the president wants to see these jobs being still being created is, is is America's focus on protecting the jobs or protecting the people who are meant to be in those jobs and the reason I ask that is because I've noticed that different countries have different approaches you know when it comes to this for instance um, in Sweden and, and in some Scandinavian countries they're really proud of saying look we don't actually care about the jobs themselves we care about the people and we just want to make sure that people can earn a living wage and we'll move them around yeah. in America it feels like a lot of the, the, the conflict comes from the fact that people are trying to protect the jobs. I'm a coal miner, you know what I mean? I, I'm a railway worker, I'm a policeman, I'm a... And, and now the job is almost entrenched when in fact the person is the is the thing you're trying to protect. Well, how, how do you find that balance? Are yeah. you trying to protect the job it, or the person? It's very different. I mean, in Europe, in a lot of European countries, when the pandemic began, people were sent home, they were paid a salary from their employer, yeah. and they didn't lose their work. Here in the United States of America, 10 million people got laid off. Uh, people were sent home. That's why they had to put out the extra help for people that want unemployment. I think in the United States, we're trying to shift towards making sure that we're pe treating people fairly mm -hmm. and cre cre creating good opportunities for those folks, that they're not concerned about that particular job, that if they lose that job, their life is over. And I think that we have to do a better job of, of scaling people up and training people up. We're looking at the apprentice model, quite honestly, that Switzerland has and, and, De and Denmark has, a lot of these countries have. You know, they're more into apprenticeships than we are. We're more into job training, and then you get thrown into the job, and you better mm -hmm, do it. If mm -hmm. you don't do it, you don't work there. You know, having these apprenticeships and changing that mindset so we're catching young people earlier too, kids that don't go to college. When they graduate high school and don't go to college, they might get a job yeah. at a fast food restaurant or someplace like that. No, we need to get those folks, those young people into apprenticeships to get into good paying jobs moving forward. Also, uh, you know, in America, we, we tend to, we get our two weeks vacation and we, we work 52, 50 weeks a year, we mm -hmm, get the two mm -hmm. weeks vacation. If you go to another country in the world, European country, they get five, six, seven weeks holiday. Right. And, and they go out and they enjoy themselves and the companies are still successful and productive. So I think that, I think that hopefully some of these companies that, that are making big money realizing that, you know, you need to spend some of that on your employees because if you have good employees and strong employees and happy employees, it'll benefit the company overall. It's always great talking to you. Before I let you go though, before I let you go, I, I, I would love to know your opinion on this. Gen Z has been leading the charge in reestablishing what work should be and how people should think about it in their lives. Yeah. You know, and one of, one of the terms that's become quite buzzy now is quiet quitting. Okay. People say, I only need to work as much as I need to work to get my salary. For too long, people in America have gone like, I work overtime, I'm the last one in the office, I don't sleep, my yeah. family hates me. People are proud of that. 
And now Gen Z is saying, no, actually, I will work for what I'm paid for, and then yeah. I will go and I will live my life. Many companies are saying this is the worst thing that could happen. Where do you stand on this as the Secretary of yeah. Labor? Let me just say, the first time I was asked the question about uh, about Kwai quitting, I really had, I thought it was people like quitting and leaving. So I, <laughs> I, gave, I gave an answer, and it was, I, I looked like a complete moron in it. But, uh, and then I looked up what it was after the fact. Um, you know, again, that goes back to, I think it goes back to employers understanding about how they, they need to know their workforce and need to have conversations with their workforce and need to make sure their workforce is, is understands what the mission is and also is treated fairly. And I think that that, that has to happen. When, when I became the mayor of Boston, you know, one, the biggest group of folks that I brought in was millennials. And millennials, quite honestly, in the beginning, if you remember, we jump from job to job to yeah, job. They're here yeah, for 10 yeah. minutes to go to a new job after that. And, and it took me some time to sit down and talk about what, what is it exactly that we can do here in the city of Boston as a, as a city to keep you working in the workforce. And I think having those conversations with your employees is so important for a corporation, or even for government. Somebody like me, myself, or other elected officials, uh, we need to have those conversations because the quiet quitting piece, um, you know, you're expecting when you hire somebody to work hard and do the right thing. But if they're not, and there's a reason for it, well, let's, let's get to the heart of what, what, the, what, the, what the reason is. Right. I hear it. Thank you so much for joining Thank me on the show. You.